Another of the new players is Tim Rosovich, who plays linebacker for the Philadelphia Eagles and lives on the beach in Southern California. Rosovich's looks are the looks of today, and he will probably be the first football hero of the Aquarius generation. I consider myself a hippie in all the good ways. I dress in different clothes and I uh, go my hair along because I have this feeling of independence and I think the youth of today can look at me and associate with me more than the average football player. They can see that a person with long hair doesn't have to be associated with something bad. I think they can associate with me more than they can with uh, a football player that has a crew cut. At defensive end, there's versatile Tim Rosovich. Although he kicks off, his real value is his kick at the enemy backfield. He's faced the great, like former Eagle Bob Brown, and beaten them. Rosovich's style is to strike hard and fast into the opponent's backfield. At that, he's already a master in his second year, and for that was invited to the Pro Bowl. When I like to be by myself and uh, think about things that uh, are troubling me or think about football, I like to go down to the, uh, to the beach, walk along the ocean. It's, uh, it's a great place to be with people and enjoy yourself or to be alone and, and think about things that are happening. The ocean is uh, so natural and such a powerful thing that it, it makes your troubles seem so small and so much easier to solve. It's like taking vitamins. It makes you, it makes you feel better and stronger. It makes your blood run thicker. More than a place for reflection, the beach showcases Rosovich's unique lifestyle. Come here. Come over here. Lay down. Play dead there. Play dead. Roll over there. Get out of here. Get out. No. <laughs> Tricks, Jamie. <laughs> Pooh Bear. Pooh Bear, come here. Pooh Bear. Play dead here, Pooh Bear. Okay, now stay like that. Tim Rosovich was another who overcame early season troubles. In 1970, Tim switched from defensive end to middle linebacker. As a neophyte, he made mistakes, but he was learning. Learning from every missed assignment or over-aggressive act. The lessons taught him the position, but nobody had to teach Tim Rosovich to hit. Against the Atlanta Falcons in his fifth game as a middle linebacker, Tim was ready, willing, and hitting. Rosovich had played his best game and was ready to seek his place as a premier middle linebacker. Unaffected by fame, he makes driftwood candles on the beach, where his thoughts all relate to the game he loves. My favorite movie was Patton. I think if he would have been a football coach, he would have been the greatest coach in history. My favorite book is the Guinness Book of World Records. It has everything that's, that they have on record in the world as being the top, the best. I'm interested in this because I want to be the top middle linebacker in football in history. Being the best takes time. In Baltimore, it only took a piece of paper to douse Rosovich's fire. Other moments were not so funny. A freshly minted middle linebacker is fair game in the pros. Mistakes lose games, deflate the spirit, cloud the future, and cancel self-confidence. I knew that uh, being at a new position, that mistakes uh, were going to happen. It was understandable that I would make a mistake. 
but making the same mistake twice is unforgivable. It's actually embarrassing to me. Learning on a loser either toughens you or makes you drop out. It turned Rosevich from an uncertain unknown into a confident craftsman. When I assume my position, all that's going through my mind at the time is that I have to get to the ball carrier. It's just that thought going through my mind a thousand times a second. I'm like a, a cobra. I try to get into the hole and strike at the person rather than being a gorilla. I think I'm a snake. I'm not gonna be embarrassed today, man. We can't be embarrassed, let's go. Let's get a block now. It's important, we gotta get it back out of here. We gotta get it out of here. Offense gotta have a touchdown. Gotta get it out now. Get a block, get two blocks. It is the last game of the season for the Eagles. A team going nowhere. For many, a meaningless game. But not to Tim Rosovich. Okay, huddle up, huddle up, huddle up. Sticky Sid, break. Hey, I think they heard me. I think they heard me, man. I think, do they think they hear me? Don't make no difference. Does it make any difference? No, we just gonna rush. Okay. Good enough. Well, do what you want. I mean, I call it. I don't know if they heard me or not, but I think they might have. Jet! Go, 15! Shut! What is this, man? shouldn't have got that, man. Getting blocked. Oh, man, that's too much. It's my fault. I'm getting blocked, man. 43 over, yeah, big stay, right? Go, 60 rip. Slim left, jet. Shut. Kind of try it. My fault. Slim left. Big 44. Swing, he should be out of the game. Did he hit you? He hit yeah, you, hit me. Are you guys see that from way over here? Oh, shut up, man. How about that guy taking a swing, man? I can't believe that, dude. I'd fight him, man, but I want to play in the second half. Yeah, maybe, maybe the end of the game. Man. No, that's bad, bad football. You okay, man? What you got? Uh, no, I can't have any injuries, man. Can't have any injuries. I'm killing us, man. I'm killing us. Well, I'm killing us, old man. Oh, come on. I'm killing us. Got to start hitting, man. We got to finish up good. I, I haven't been hitting at all. I'm trying, but I, I just I'm not getting to the ball, man. I don't know what it is, you know. I'm getting blocked too much. I don't know. Can't let it. Got to go. We got to have this touchdown. That's important. This is more important. No, I'm not doing bad, but I, I'm not doing I'm not doing as good as I want to, man. I've made a tackle yet today. Haven't made a tackle yet. Oh, well. Oh, well, I'm embarrassed about those two runs, man. How'd they do that to us? They don't do that to you, man. That's embarrassing. We gotta come out in the second half and embarrass them, man. We've gotta make up for that. That's bad. That's that's not that's not good football. What is that? He knocked him down! He tripped him! That didn't give him a first down! Oh, they're blind. They don't see it, man. They're blind. We can make it now. We got it. We got it. Okay, turn on. Give him a move. Okay, turn up. Turn up. Ah, uh, let's get a good lead so we can just run over these guys, man. Run over them. Touchdown! Hold on, Hulk. All right. Okay, we got him going, man. It's up to the defense now. The offense can move all day now. We got to stop them. Larry, you okay? Hey, good effort, man. I love you, man. Good effort. That's dynamite. I love that. Good guts, man. I, that's dynamite. It's a big break now. We got to take advantage of it. Wham, wide, blow, right? It's a big series now. Big series. We got to have it. We got to get the ball now. Let's go, Ado. Let's get some hits. That's what 
like a chip strap, man. Mel, get some hits, get a fumble. Ernie, right, split right. Isaac Keebry. Touchdown. We've got to have it, Norm. Got to have it. It's a big play offense. Come on now. We got to have it right now. We can't wait to land the game now. Take advantage of it now. Let's go. Take it in, man. Get up, get up, get up, get up. Get up, get up. Hold on. Good effort. Good effort. Okay, take it in, Larry. Squeeze that ball, Larry. Get a block. Get a block. Cut in. Go out. Go out. Put your head down. Turn it up. Go. Larry, that's the way to run, Larry. He's doing a nice job, isn't he? Nice job. Guy wants to play, man. Guy wants to play. That's good. I'd like to see that, man. I'd like to see that. That's nice. That's dynamite. The offense did a dynamite job today, man. It's a start. This is a start for next year, man. This guy, we're on our way, man. We are on our way now. When you, don't hit, when you don't hit anybody really hard, you really don't feel like you're playing a game. Oh, yeah. I, I got some good hits. I broke my neck and bent my face mask. But, uh... Well, it's, you're supposed to punish the people, though. Oh, my, I tore my neck up pretty bad. It's all right. Last game, last no, game. No, I'm not worried about it. Get the Southern California heel there right up. Oh, I know that, but I uh, want to use it to club some people with my head, man. Boy, this game is a long, long game, man. Got to hold them. This is big. We gotta have it. No field goal. No, let's get a touchdown. Touchdown now. All right. All right. The last game ends in victory. But the revival show was not yet complete. An eager new convert, Tim Rosovich, still waited in the wings. Rosovich was California born and bred, an All American defensive end at USC. But he ended up 3,000 miles away as a Philadelphia Eagle middle linebacker. In a strange town at a strange position, Rosovich spent a lot of time being a little confused. But there was one thing he didn't have to learn. He knew how to rip people and rattle heads. Rosovich was leading wild man on a defense called the Antibodies and Philly fans ate him up. Yet Rosovich was not pleased in his own success. In the East, he was a lost soul, adrift in a strange sea. He longed for beach and blue sky. In 1972, Rosovich was granted his wish, but part of the ache still remained. Two weeks after arriving in San Diego, he injured a knee in preseason and doctors told him this year would be wasted. A subdued Tim Rosovich was left with only his rich imagination. In his mind's eye, he saw number 82 at middle linebacker for the San Diego Chargers.
The image was so vivid that he was left with no choice. Rosevich set out on his own personalized rehabilitation program. Rosso prepared himself both physically and mentally. Slowly, the former leader of the antibodies recaptured the wealth of all his weirdness. Miraculously, the strange person defied medical science. In just nine weeks, the rickety knee had knit it, and Rosevich was back in uniform. It would make a nice story to say he proceeded to tear up the league, but that wouldn't be strictly true. He was a little rusty at first, but bit by bit, he climbed back into the groove. Soon, the wild man had returned and was back rattling heads. Rosevich is still learning his craft. He may not be pro football's finest middle linebacker yet, but he added another vital ingredient to the revival show. In fact, Rosevich returned just in time to add his special touch to San Diego's finest moment of 72. In the frozen splendor of New Arrowhead Stadium, Harlan Fari's master plan of change worked to blueprint perfection. Eagle teammates share other memories of Tim Rosevich. I remember one summer at training camp when Tim caught a tiny little bird outside of the cafeteria. And right before we all sat down to have lunch, he stuck the bird in his mouth. And at the beginning of the meal, somebody asked him a question. And when he opened his mouth to answer it, the bird flew out. <laughs> Tim Rosevich, a modern middle linebacker on the rise. A man who makes people laugh. A thin and gentle person who makes candles on the beach. Get in line, get in line. Hey, buddy, wait your turn. Do not hesitate to do so. I'm going to get close to the boy. When I give you the signal, create a diversion. How? I don't care how, just as long as people aren't looking at me. Which is the 10th largest city. Over 20,000 exhibits depicting American circus life. The building that you see straight ahead, Tower Life Building. <laughs> Where? There! Where? Sir, you're all gonna have to sit down, I'm sorry. Sir? Why don't you guys sit down and quit rocking the boat? Yeah. But by the end of the decade, that younger generation was sending its best athletes to the NFL, and they changed the face and the fashion of the game. Players like Eagles linebacker Tim Rosevich came right off the college campus into the NFL and brought that free-spirited attitude with them. Well, there was a whole new, uh, a whole new culture, as they say now, and uh, they were a little wild, and I didn't speak their language very much, but they presented a whole new picture. Uh, there wasn't. Uh, that I wasn't used to, so I think I let Steve handle that. <laughs> that was his generation. Sticky Sid, break. Big play, big play now. I had a unique connection with Tim Rosevich, number 82. For two years, I shared Split an apartment left. with Tim and Gary Pettigrew. Gary's the defensive tackle to Tim's right, number 88. 
When their careers ended, they both moved back to the West Coast. But I thought it would be fun if we got together again. So we did. Naturally, I captured it all on film. This is a story that I was not privileged to, but I remember about the donuts. It, you know, when the reporters used to come in and there'd be the big thing of donuts. Uh, you don't know what I'm, uh, Gary, yes. you know the story, yeah, right? Of course, of course, Tim doesn't remember very conveniently because he is the one in the middle of the donut, or the donut was in the middle of Tim. Yeah. Now, you, know, you don't remember that because this is a great. I don't story. remember how many donuts. We're never going to be able to. Use, we're never going to be able to use it. But it's just, it's just. Well, good, you know, it's some treasures are best left lost. But you get the idea. What we had, the three of us, was more like a lab experiment than a living arrangement. I was this aspiring filmmaker rooming with two football players who themselves were very different. We clashed instantly. Maybe that's why we became friends. But we were very different. Tim's whole attitude was was. Well, it's just like the difference between Northern California and Southern California. He was that L.A. type, and I wasn't. Oh, that makes me sick. He was right out there, right out in your face, and all the time. <laughs> we got to make up for it, though. We got to well, yeah, we'll we get one hat, and we'll straighten it out. Yeah, we got to touch. But it was interesting the dynamics because there were players that resented you because they felt, you know, Pettigrew's a snob. He went to Stanford. He's an intellectual. And Rosso, they thought this guy was from Mars, you know, with the, the tie-dye T-shirts and the capes and the uh, rawhide necklaces and stuff. And there was I in the middle. And we didn't, <laughs> we didn't even know you. That's right. Where the hell do you fit in, anyway? OK, so I didn't fit in. But no one fit in with Rosso, not even in the 60s. Rosso used to sleep on the floor. You know, how he wouldn't go, you wouldn't use a bed. And I remember waking up and seeing Rosso would be laid out. You know, just look, this like this. This is the way you'd wake up in the morning. You'd come out, and he would be like this. Well, you know, the and reason you do that. You'd have to get up and step over him like that. And i say, you know, come Steve, on, Rosso. Get Steve, up. So what the hell? And, and that was, wait a second. Now, that was because that you used to say you had to sleep with the magnetic. Mag North. The magnet that your, the, your electrical waves had to go through it your body? It recharged your body. If you slept with your head towards the magnetic north, mm -hmm. It energized your body. Except that he wasn't sleeping. He was just passed out. <laughs> <laughs> <So he was. laughs> well, it doesn't make me a bad person. No, <laughs> not at all. You remember the times when we took old Dick Butkus's films and rolled him before the ball game and took a look at the way we he used to take all of that whole thing those on Butkus. Great hits. I remember the three of us just sitting around right. nice just talking about Butkus. Dick Butkus. He was a source of fascination for me as a filmmaker because he was such a primitive, visceral presence on the screen. And Tim and Gary identified with Butkus because, like them, he played on a losing team, but he never let the losing diminish his passion for the game. And a passion for football was one thing Tim, Gary, and I all had in common. The knowledge that I gained about football through Steve and his background helped, my, helped me play better. And uh, I think that uh, his inside information that he got from me as far as a player's attitude probably helped him be a better filmmaker. So it was a good relationship. We had a, a kind of a, a guinea pig menage a trois. <laughs> 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 what are they running? Are they running that trap in there? I'll never forget the day Timmy wore a microphone for NFL films. I shot the sideline camera, and for four quarters, I lived inside my roommate's world. Gary, nice tackle. Otherwise, I'm, I'm not doing anybody any good because I'm getting blocked away from the hole. Living with both you guys, it gave me a respect for the, the intelligence, the toughness, and the demands that the game put on the players. Living with you and, and knowing what you went through, not only physically. Got some analgesic, man. My, I got some torn muscles in my neck, man. But mentally, and the anguish, and especially the seasons that were bad. Oh, penalty. The, the way you guys would get beat up, and then the fans would boo you. Oh, shut up, man! The next Sunday, it was the same. You could see the energy start to build. All right, first down, first down. And then you'd be right back there again. We got to get another one right now, man. We'd come out in the second half and we'd just run over it. It's such a pleasure to be able to play in the thing that your is your dream as you're growing up. Is is that's the thing that you know is mind-boggling to me that I actually ever got there. We won, we won, man. We, we finished up with the win. I remember asking you one time, how can you stand doing this 
film business about football, traveling, watching, going over films, reading about it, you know, 12, 14 hours a day, day in, day out, 365 years, because it would make me puke. <laughs> <laughs> and you said, I love it. I really enjoy it, Gary. I really do. We played it. We, we got down and dirty and, and bloody and, uh, and injured. And uh, Steve has, has brought uh, what we know as football to, to the masses, to the public. Right. And, uh, and I can understand why he would enjoy that. Are you getting close yeah. to the end of a yeah. reel? I have to run into the, I have I to run into the end of the reel. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, you guys get up and go ahead. We'll yeah. film you leaving. Okay. I'm going to pee now. All right, and I'm uh, going to lay down here, right Russell. Back. Go ahead. I'm going to fall down the stairs. Yeah, I'm going to take a rest. I'm going to rest. I, I'm, I, don't I, step on me. I'm should, laying on the, should on the, on I, the should magnetic I pee be, north. Should I pee this between Gary's legs north. while he's peeing? Uh, or should I just, like, you know, I can pee over a bus. Oh, yeah. What? Uh. Well, <laughs> he probably uh, should move along now. For Tim Rosovich, it's the end of a bittersweet season. He has learned while the team has lost, and he will go home with mixed emotions. He will go back to the beach and dream of a brighter future and higher glories. Many times when I'm walking alone on the beach, I think that I'd like to be in the Super Bowl and be playing middle linebacker and make every tackle in the game. But my final tackle would be a game-saving tackle, and making it, I would die and go to heaven and live in happiness for eternity.